Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Let's talk a little bit about uh, projectile motion. And you probably know quite a few things already about projectile motion, uh, just inherently. But let's see if we can sort of put some mathematical basis behind it. So, projectile motion looks like this. If I draw an XY coordinate system, and I launch an object at some <clears throat> initial velocity and some initial angle theta, what happens to that object? What does it do? Does it keep going up forever? No, because there's this giant thing underneath us called the Earth that tends to pull everything down, right? It's not so much pulling us down as pushing us down. What happens to this object as it fires? It eventually comes back to Earth, of course. What is the trajectory that it takes? What's that name for that curve? Uh, how about right here in the middle? Yeah, it'll have a parabolic shape, right? It'll launch up, and it'll go like this, and this is our good old parabola. Okay, it's a parabolic shape. Now, you probably know a few things already about that parabola. If I want to hit the maximum range, what should my theta be? You've probably all done this before, right? You've thrown a baseball, you tried to get it to go as far as possible. What is that launch angle that you should, that you should have? What do you think? Yeah. 45 degrees. 45 degrees, right? 45 degrees. Now this is ignoring air resistance, of course. Uh, when you include air resistance, it's actually a lot lower than that. So if you ask a real baseball player, are you going to throw it at 45 degrees? They're going to say, no, I never throw it at 45 degrees. And that's because they're worried about air resistance. And the same with golf. You never launch a golf ball at 45 degrees because of air resistance. It's considerably lower than that. But in the absence of air resistance, 45 degrees will definitely give us maximum range. Okay, so in our solution, hopefully, we'll see that that is indeed true. But what else can we say about projectile motion? What is the acceleration of the object in the vertical direction? On the way up, is it positive? And then on the way down, is it negative? Is that right? Yes or no? Somebody in the back is shaking her head no. No, why not? It's always negative, right? As soon as it leaves our hand or leaves the cannon or leaves the rifle, it's always negative. It's always negative g, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, here on Earth, of course. What about the acceleration in the x direction? Does this thing speed up or slow down in the x direction? at all. Again, we're ignoring air resistance. I see some people shaking their head no, and that is correct. Acceleration in the x direction is zero. It doesn't change its speed in the x direction. It only changes its speed in the vertical direction. Okay, what else do we know? These are some of the givens. And some of the other givens are the following. We can say x initial is zero. We can say that y initial is also zero. It starts there at the origin. Okay. And then we can do one more thing. We can break up the velocity, v, that initial velocity, into components one in that direction, and one in that direction. And if that is angle theta, then what is Vxi equal to? Is it Vi sine theta or Vi cosine theta? What do you think? You guys remember Sokotoa? Remember her? She's cool. You should get to know her. Vi, what do I want to write? Cosine, right? Cosine of theta. Vy is therefore 
sine of theta. Okay, we can put all this stuff together now into the kinematic equations, and let's do that next. Okay, one of our kinematic equations is this. X final equals X initial plus VXI times T plus one half A sub X T squared. And let's put in some of our parameters now. We've got zero for the initial position and VXI we just said was VI cosine theta. We're still gonna multiply by T. A sub X we said was zero. And so we get xf is equal to vi cosine theta times t. And so we could solve this for t. t is xf over vi cosine theta. So if you know how far the thing went, and you also know its initial speed and its initial angle, you can immediately calculate how long it's in the air. All right, this is one way to do it. You, in fact, don't know anything about the height, but you don't have to know anything about the height if you have all these other parameters. The other equation is for y. yf equals yi plus vy initial times t plus one-half a sub y t squared. And now let's put in our parameters. We've got zero for the initial position. Vy initial, we said was Vi sine theta, still multiplying by T, and Ay, we said was negative G. Okay, so that's our equation for Y. We can get rid of that zero, and we just have Vi sine theta T minus one half GT squared. All right, let's take that and Let's plug in T from earlier so we can remove time from the equation. All right, we can do that. Y final equals VI sine theta times T, which we said was XF over VI cosine theta. And then we're going to subtract one half gt squared, which is xf over vi cosine theta, quantity squared. All right, and now we can simplify this a little bit. The vi here cancels with the vi there. The sine theta over cosine theta becomes tangent theta, and we get xf tangent theta. And this guy over here, let's just multiply it out a little bit. We've got a G up top. We have a two VI squared cosine squared theta. And then all of that is multiplying XF squared. So in general, for any X and Y, we have an equation for the projectile that is the following y is equal to x tangent theta minus g over 2 vi squared cosine squared theta times x squared. And this is a very nice equation because now there's no time in it anymore. It says that if I launch a projectile, all I need to know is the starting speed and the starting angle, and everything else will be determined. I put in some x, and I calculate exactly what y corresponds to for that particular x. And this equation is satisfied over that whole parabola. Okay, it's a very nice equation. So one thing that we had just asked you about was what is the maximum range that you can obtain. And if you manipulate some of these equations, namely if you manipulate this last equation, you can come up with the answer that theta equals 45 degrees will give you the maximum range. All right, hopefully that's clear. 
Uh, if not, come see me in office hours. Cheers. Any questions about this stuff? Okay. Is this in your book, this equation? Anybody seen that in your book? I don't, I'm not positive it's in your book, so that's why I was curious. <laughs>